So welcome to the latest uh, instalment in our Come to Work with Mark section here on Kermode Uncut. A few weeks ago, my good friend Alan Jones, who runs Frightfest, tweeted that he'd been to see Killer Joe, the new film by William Friedkin. In his tweet he said he didn't know what he'd enjoyed more, the fact that the film was as full on as it was or the fact that he'd seen it before me. Well, I'm just about to rectify this. This is uh, MPC on Wardour Street and I'm about to go in there and see the new William Friedkin film from a play by Tracy Letts, Killer Joe. My payment is $25,000 in cash, in advance, no exceptions. 25? Yes, sir. I thought you said 20. I was told 20. 25. Is that a problem? We don't have a problem with 25. That's not our problem. And what is your problem? We have a problem with the advance. No exceptions. Sir, let me explain. One of the reasons we're interested in having this done is my mother holds a very large insurance policy. They usually do. Now, we thought if we could guarantee payment after the policy had been covered... Look, this really isn't open for discussion. The conversation is finished. Please, this is... What did you think this was, huh? Let's make a deal? So, this is me coming out of the screening of uh, William Friedkin's Killer Joe. Did I like it? I don't know. Here's what I do know. It's very edgy, it's very full on, it's very unruly, it's very untamed. You know, Friedkin made The Exorcist and The French Connection, which I, I really loved. They were very radical films, but I also liked films like Cruising, which a lot of people really disliked. And then he ended up making fairly mainstream and sometimes a bit boring films, films like The Guardian, which I think even horror fans found it hard to embrace, Rules of Engagement, which was a little bit televisual, and of course Jade from a frankly rotten script by Joe Esterhouse. And it wasn't easy to be a Friedkin fan during those periods, despite the fact that everyone thinks that I like everything Friedkin's done. That's not true. But I refound my faith in Friedkin with Bug, in which he was adapting a Tracy Let's Play and stripped everything right down, got a group of actors in a really, really tight situation, full-on psychological paranoia, and I thought he was, he was right back on form. I remember being in Cannes. After the first screening of that, which I missed, someone came out of it and they said, Pug, I've just seen it. I hated it, but you'll love it. And they were right, I did. In the case of Killer Joe, firstly, like Bug, Tracy Letts, you know, intense screenplay, intense and very fine performances from Matthew McConaughey, Gina Gershon, rising star Juno Temple. Sexual politics are all over the place, and that's understating it. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. There are scenes in it that are as out there as the most out there scenes in any freaking film. There is one sequence of pseudo-sexual violence involving a piece of fried chicken which was quite repulsive and will put you off ever eating chicken again. I'm a vegetarian, so it's not such an issue for me. The thing about the film is this. It's really interesting how Friedkin seems to have found his edge again, seems to have found his unruly quality, seems to have found the thing that made Freakin films interesting in the first place, the fact that he, was, he would always go slightly too far, that he would never understate things, that he would always push things just a little bit more than was acceptable. On that first viewing, there are things in that film that impressed me and things in that film that I really didn't like. I'm quite pleased that Freakin still has the ability to confuse, upset and confound me. I have to let the film settle down to decide whether I can forgive it for the things that I don't like. Of course, we never discussed the possibility of a retainer. What do you mean? You know how to reach me. Call me if she's interested. Hey, man, you talking about my sister? Is that who she is? <laughs> 